the worthy couple, Mr. and Mrs. Mulrow themselves. You will perceive them in their family mansion of Ozier Castle. This is not the largest of their houses, but it is a great favourite with Mrs. Mulrow, as it is very well ventilated. A maiden aunt of hers having once been suffocated by accident when travelling by rail in a tin travelling box. That is Mrs. Mulrow with the string of beautiful beads round her neck, for, like most ladies, she is very fond of finery. You may notice she is quite wide awake and does not look too amiable, being in fact engaged in calling her husband over the coals as he was out very late last night. This is Auntie, a nice quiet old party, although she appears in rather an undignified position. The fact is she, like many other rather elderly ladies, is very nervous about thunderstorms and always scuttles off to the coal cellar as soon as she hears a clap of thunder. When she cannot get to the cellar, she makes for the scuttle, as she always feels safe among the coals, and also always wears a coal scuttle bonnet when she goes out, as she don't hold with these new-fangled bonnets made of two straws and a cobweb, as she says. Sir Robert Pincher, the head of the family. He has large estates in the Isle of Dogs and is the member for Barking. His country house is the Kennels, Berkshire. He is a fine old English gentleman, and his favourite sports are hunting and ratting, and he very much enjoys a pipe, as you see, and a jug of his own home-brewed ale. When he was younger, he dearly loved a fight, but since he has married and settled down, he has become much quieter, and is never the first to begin. But if anybody should tread on his tail, or make remarks on his pipe, he is up in a minute, and then woe betide them. Here he is. Terum Pincher Esquire, the eldest son, and a sworn foe to every cat that ever curled a tail. He is also very fierce and warlike, a member of the Guards Club, and also a great dandy. I dare say you have noticed what dandies most of the soldiers are, with their little canes and smart clothes, and this is the case with Terum. He fancies all the ladies are in love with him as he strolls round the park and lounges by the railings with other young puppies of his acquaintance. Now comes Miss Pincher. This sweet creature is the only unmarried daughter left in the Pincher establishment. She is just trying the effect at the glass of a lovely Paris mantle and hood, for between ourselves she expects a visit from her intended today and is naturally anxious to look her very best. She spends a great deal of time at the drapers just now, for she is getting her wedding trousseau ready, with the assistance of her mamma. Professor Stevenson Watt Growler, a relative of Captain Growler. This gentleman is rather annoyed that he can't run as fast as his neighbours, the Greyhound family, and so he is bringing out a steam engine on which he thinks he will be able to mount and run down a hare or a fox. He has got it all right, as you see, except the works, but that, he says, is only a small matter. So in due time, if we all live long enough, we shall no doubt see him doing the fastest on record, and the Greyhounds will all be behind. Why, this is sweet Jessamy Rasper, the great poet and musician of Cats, sole inventor of the lovely tune of which the old cow of the storybooks died, and the gifted being who composes and sets to music all those thrilling ditties which we hear sung outside our bedroom windows at nights. When with his lovely fiddle, whose strings, let me tell you, proceeded from the interior of his own ancestors, he approached the fair Jenny Mouser and set up a little love sonnet of his own in B-flat. The business was down at once. The Reverend Peaceful Purrer, Dean of Cheshire, Jessamy himself played the wedding march, and the whole company, who were beautifully dressed in their own skins, a great deal of white and grey being worn, joined in in their most fetching tones. The consumption of fish and cream at the breakfast was something too startling to write about, and when the happy couple drove off in their own mouse trap, such a shower of walnut shells, which, as you know, cats wear as shoes, were sent flying after them that everyone said the couple appeared to be dead nuts on one another.